Let's talk about cat boost. This is our last gradient boosting method for today. This technique specifically focuses on some ordering principles and it applies this to processing categorical features and also boosting the trees. And as always, here is the paper link. You can go back to that for further reading. And the main takeaway from this paper is this ordering principle. And we will apply this when we are target encoding our categorical features and also boosting our trees. In the next couple of slides, I will explain what target encoding is, and I will also show you how to do this ordered target encoding. Then after that, I will also show you how to do this ordered boosting. Let's start with the target encoding. This is a general purpose ML technique, and also an efficient way to deal with categorical variables. What we do is that we go, we go and replace our categorical variables with some numericals, and we calculate those numericals from some target statistics. Mean target encoding is a well-known one. In this one, we replace our categoricals with the mean target value for them. Here's an example. Assume we have this simple data set with the color feature and the target. In the color, we have blue, red, and green, so three unique categories. And in the target, we have either zero or ones. Let's apply mean target encoding here. As a first step, I will calculate these mean targets. For each category, here we have blues, in these three rows, so I will have 0, 1, 1. I will sum them up and divide by 3. Overall, this gives me 0 0.67. I have two data points with red, so I will sum them up, 1 and 0, then divide by 2. For green, I have a single data point with 0, so it's going to be 0. Then we will go and replace these categoricals and use these numbers this time. And this is my Neve feature column. One of the biggest advantages of using this target encoding versus one-hand encoding is we don't exploit our feature space. If you remember with the one-hand encoding, we have these extra features that we add. With this, we just have this single column at the end. Let's talk about target encoding with smoothing. Here, I'm just trying to follow the notation in the paper. So we change the notation slightly, but overall, it's the same idea. Here in this equation, we add the prior to the numerator and we add this plus one to the denominator for smoothing purposes. Overall, we have the counting class plus prior over total count plus one in the denominator. Counting class is just how many times the label value was equal to one for objects for that categorical feature. Again, I'm assuming the binary classification case here. Prior is just a number that we use and a total count is a total number of objects for that categorical feature value. And overall, we will just calculate these using this equation. So let's apply the equation here with the prior of 0 0.05. This time, I will make my calculations like this. As you see, we have plus ones in the numerator, and we have the 0 0.05 in the numerator. And overall, we will have some similar numbers, but this time smoother. For example, we don't have a 0 for green. This time, it is something not 0, 0 0.025. Still small, but not 0. And again, we will go back and replace our categoricals with these new numbers. Let's talk about the order target encoding. So this paper proposes this ordering idea. And it is mainly used to prevent overfitting due to target leakage. The paper says that if you consider this global statistics when we are calculating target encoding, that can lead to overfitting because those things may be different for our test data sets. Because of that, they offer this ordered encoding technique. This is inspired by the online learning techniques. In this case, the target statistics rely only on the observed history. So we will do something similar to that. We also change our equation slightly here. This time we consider up to the current one, not including that data point in these calculations. And let's do our calculations. For blue, I'm going to look at this counting class. It is zero, because actually we don't even have any data points before this, so these are all going to be zero. And overall, we will have this 0 0.05. For red, I will make our calculation like this again. We have nothing before red as another red, so this is going to be zero, total count as well. And we don't have any one before this, so it's going to be zero. So for blue, this time I'm considering this as my history and I will calculate this using this history here. 
or let's say this history here. So uh, count in class is zero because I don't have any one. The previous one was zero, so I have a zero here. And overall, I had one single data point before this, so I will put it in here, and this will be my calculation. Then similarly, we will just keep doing this, and as you see, this time we are only using this observed history in these calculations, so that we don't use this global statistics when calculating these numbers. And overall, this helps us prevent this overfitting problem. So this paper also applied this ordering idea to boosting. In the classical boosting, we were using multiple trees and we were using this whole data set on those re residuals. And again, this paper says that, that that can lead to overfitting and they offer some type of ordered boosting so that we don't use the whole data set when we calculate these residuals. It looks like this. I will give you some notation, but then I will explain it. Assume that we have this model MI that was trained on the first I data points. Then we will calculate the residuals at each data point I using the model MI minus one. So the idea is that we will use a tree that didn't see this data point before when we calculate the residuals so that we don't really overfit on that data point. And over here, you will also see that we have this M4 that was trained on this four data points and when I'm calculating my fifth points residual as you see I am looking at the label but I am only using the model before this so I'm using M4 here and overall that's how I get my residuals in this technique with this technique we need to have n separate trees which is not that feasible because we may deal with some large data sets so in the practical application the authors say that they only work with trees at locations of to the power of j where j goes from 1 to this log n here. Overall, this is what this paper proposes. This ordering idea is important because that helps us prevent overfitting problem. Let's talk about all these techniques that we talked about and try to compare them for some practical reasons. We had XGBoost, we had LightGBM, and we had CatBoost. When you go and try to use this, you will encounter some issues, such as categorical variables and missing values. Let's see how these libraries handle those. For categorical variables, if you want to use the XGBoost, unfortunately, you have to get your 100 encoded features or target encoded features beforehand because this library doesn't handle them automatically. With LightGBM, if you are using some type of data frame, you can set the column type to category or you can use this categorical feature parameter in this library to set your categorical features, and it handles those automatically. For CatBoost, similarly, you can set the category type in your data frame, or you can use the cat features parameter to show which categorical variables that you have. Again, this will handle those categorical variables automatically. Let's talk about missing values. For the missing values, all these libraries handle them automatically For, with XGBoost. Uh, in this case, the branch directions are learned for missing values, so that it has this default branch for those. For LightGBM, it skips the data point during split and allocates later to the leaves. So it handles the missing values that way. With the cat post, it uses some default values, such as for numerical missing values, they are set to the mean value for that feature column. And overall, these are the practical aspects of these libraries. And all these libraries are really useful especially for tabular datasets, I strongly recommend that you try these techniques for your final project.